Hi, this is Dr. Shweta Aradhya and welcome to Neuro Meditation. We will be debunking the myths of meditation and bringing all the amazing neuroscience with this technique of super brain hack. The takeaway that you are going to be having post all these modules is literally going to be, of course, learning meditation, but very, very simple understanding the emotional regulation and optimizing your executive function. When I say executive function, which means my decision ability is amazing, my attention is good, my focus is good, my mood regulation, ability to understand good and bad, ability to think right would start to happen. Now, what really is meditation? Let's understand the theory and the practice of what is meditation. Now, if you are first time exposing yourself to meditation or if you are an avid meditator, if you have been learning about meditation, this particular course is for you any which ways because we will be taking a little bit of a step back and going into the nitty gritties of it, literally the nuts and bolts of operational things which are happening in the brain. There is not a single person who would have said, I have not meditated? Because I want you to imagine going in a road, you're driving your car and suddenly your mind just drifts off. You just, you suddenly reach a place and say, oh, how did I reach here? So you were in the state of mind where you're not consciously attending, but you are in the state called theta. I will be talking about alpha, beta, theta, delta as we progress along the course. So technically those states of daydreaming where you are drifting away can be the beginning of meditation. Now, I always say meditation is very easy and very difficult. Very easy to understand theoretically, very difficult to practice practically. Now, meditation is often quite a misunderstood word. And generally, you know, from the point of view of neuroscience, I say that whatever the things that we are going to teach is going to be preparedness for meditation. You can never do meditation. Meditation must happen. There's a difference. So please listen to this very carefully. You cannot do meditation. You only prepare to do the meditation. Meditation must happen. Not just you and me. All the celebrities have also been into this uh, thing of meditation. Meditation is often a nice fad. Meditation has often become sort of a go-to topic. You know, if you go to these parties and seminars and webinars, people are talking about meditation. Great, right? But what is very, very important is it can be very personal. It can be very individualized. There is no one size fits all when it comes to meditation. So I love to explore meditation from the point of view of this experience. So that's my uh, spiritual teacher who is meditating. And when I used to look at her, she would sit hours long and I would wonder, what is she doing? What is happening in the brain? Because the moment I want to sit, suddenly a to-do list comes in my mind. How many of you would have that to-do list popping up? How many of you would get into your past? What did I do yesterday? What did I do the day before? What am I to do tomorrow? The moment I try to quieten my mind, the mind just jumps up. There is like a spring phenomena which is happening. My mind is just overreacting now or overacting. So the real purpose is the real purpose of meditation, quietening the mind. Is the real purpose sitting still and straight? Why do I need to sit still and straight? Do I need to use any particular posture? In the ancient wisdom, we call it the mudras. Do I need to use a particular mudra, a particular gesture? Do I need to sit straight? Can I sleep and do the meditation? Can I do dancing meditation? Can I move and meditate? Well, these will be all the questions as we go through the course, we will be taking it across. Now, meditation is very good for health. It has umpteen benefits. It not just has an influence on the physical health, it also has a deep influence on the energy health. When I say energy body, I'm not an energy science specialist, but I do bring in specialists who are energy experts. In fact, in one of my uh, travel to a place, it was called the Center for Higher Energy and Functional Resonance Scanning. I went and met the doctor and I said, okay, I'm a 
uh, allopathic practitioner i understand physical body i understand physical brain can you show me what is my energy body looking like so i went and got done something called the kirlian photography so this is one of my kirlian pictures many 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 years back and this is one of the kirlian picture of uh, a meditator now i was very very keen to understand because the moment this picture came out the doctor started to ask me very specifically the very first question have you ever meditated and my answer was absolutely no and i would say why would you ask that question well when he looked at these white spaces generally when a light is passed through these camera so there's a special physics rare fraction mechanism by which you do see a vibhya pattern of the light which comes out now in my case it was all white across here and he said you know there are a lot of breaches there are a lot of breaks in the energy very uh, important for you to start meditating and and this sort of you know hurt me it was sort of a thing which i took back home and i said oh my god i need to fix my energy body i really need to work on it well this was many 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 years back but nowadays you can if you have an iphone you can just grab your iphone and there is a simple app called orla a u r l a and you can do a pre and a post before after breathing before after meditation and you will see some of the light again exactly the same way a little bit in sophisticated or a little bit not too advanced kind of a mechanism but you will still see that energy body so again we will keep talking about the energy body we will keep talking about the various chakras or the wheels of the energy which is around us the physical uh, health and the physical body we will keep exploring all this as we get along in the course now my exposure to meditation has been absolutely i would say painfully initiated and why would i say painfully initiated i love to show this amazing japanese philosophy there are moments called ken show in your life there is a deep pain which you go through and there are moments of insights two people are talking i'm talking about my life experiences and suddenly the person gets that insight to change that is called the satori moments for me exposure to this meditation or the techniques of meditation was indeed a ken show moment many 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 years back i had this friend of mine uh, who was a childhood friend we grew up together i went into medical school she went into marketing but she was like a family friend almost like a sister and we grew up 20 years together and one fine day she just disappeared out of my life it was very very painful an experience it was emotionally so disturbing there was no rhyme there was no reason and suddenly ghosting that is the new age new world technology the word which people are using there are a lot of right swipes you know what i'm talking about and then suddenly people do disappear out of your life so it was very painful for me it was indeed so painful that i felt something is wrong in my life you know i could not perform my intellectual capacities were at stake i could not read i could not talk to people i was shut i was not able to meet new people i was fearful all this happened and i literally thought that I I would never be able to be able to talk normally or I would able to relate normally to people. I am sure this would have happened in your life as well or your near loved ones. So when this happens, when these emotional jolts happen in your life, you start to step back and realize why did that happen to me? What could I have done differently? what if my mind was prepared in a way that i was emotionally mature what if i was able to take it in the right context i would not have lamented for hours long i would not have ruminated that process for years long that is what meditation taught me it allowed me to take a step back it allowed me to view my mind to witness my mind witness all the upheavals what was happening in the mind to create that distance and understand that i am not the mind in the english language we never say i mind or i brain i always say my mind my brain there is a distinct difference there is a there is a gap there is a bridge what is that so then the fundamental philosophical absolutely prudent 
and pertinent question which comes in, who am I? I'm not my mind, I'm not my brain. So meditation allows you to sort of take a step back and start understanding. We live in a world with pressures. We want to have lots of things happening around us. Some things are just absolutely not so pleasant. There's wars, there's economical upheavals, so many things are happening. What if I was able to be equipoised? What if I was able to be completely in a state of tranquility? Things may happen. Some things are out of my control. The external control would not be determining my happiness. I would be having the key to that happiness, to that well-being. So how can I make that happen? So letting go of the thing for me was the big shift in the brain which was required. So when I started to learn meditation, it sort of started to give me that insight and brain for me, sort of, you know, I love what um, Omuza has said that everything starts in the brain. You can't improve what you cannot identify with. This is a very, very powerful statement because you really have to understand what mind, what brain are you operating from? If you do understand that, life becomes easy. Of course, we will be chatting, we will be doing a lot of stuff. The moment your brain operates at a certain frequency, your mind operates at a certain frequency, the emotional transfer is also happening to your body. Look at this map. When I'm angry, I never kick. You know, I, I generally do like this because most of the energy transfer is happening in the upper body. Most of the energy is being around the upper self or the upper body. Now look at this, when I am happy, the, all the energy of the emotions is distilled across at the body. The state of bliss, the state of peace is all giving me this entire diffuse emotional positive energy across. So when I modulate my mind, I modulate my brain, I do modulate my emotional physiological system. So the red, whatever you saw, by the way, was this is the scale. Red is high and the blue is low. So anywhere that you see red and yellow or orange is which means the higher the energy or positive the energy or better the energy. And if you look at anything which is dull, which is gray, which is blue, which is light blue, which means it's lower in energy. I love this emotional map representation because this is a great way to put the context that the way I think, the way I act, the way I behave, the way my habit forms, the way my character happens, that's what can decide my destiny. So extremely important and necessary. I love some of the books uh, which are in this context. There's a beautiful book which is called The Altered Traits. Some amazing study and work has been given and done. Uh, I would definitely recommend going through this book as well. Coming back to it, what is really meditation? So when I had this problem and I, when I stepped back, I had to quieten my mind. I had to get certain answers. First of all, I had to learn what is meditation. What really is meditation, if you go through the definition, the beautiful thing is there is no universally accepted definition of meditation. Which was sort of when I read it the first time, I was quite intrigued and interested. You know, if you go through the Wikipedia, but meditation has proven difficult to define as it covers a wide range of dissimilar practices in different traditions which is absolutely true. I mean, look at the total number of the meditations or the types of meditations that are known. There's something called the Smriti Dhyan, Jain Dhyan, Mantra Dhyan, Swapna Dhyan, Nidra Dhyan, Transcendental Meditation, Kundalini Meditation, Thratak Meditation, Arupa Dhyan. I'm just skipping a few because it's very important for us as a message to understand that there is something called types of meditation. There's lots and lots of work in the meditation what has happened over the period of time. But the point is, what is really neuro meditation? And my entire course is going to be limited to understanding the neuroscience of meditation. Yes, you need to sit straight so that your spine and your mind is aligned all the thoughts and the channels, the entire flow is uniform. You do have a focused mind. Try to be very active, you know, you're moving and suddenly to have a very focused mind. 
won't happen. You really need to sit still to make your mind still. Yes, there will be certain more steps into it, certain more this into it, but in the neuro meditation context, what is really happening? What is happening is you're seeing a picture of this particular structure, which is called the limbic system, also called as the emotional cortex. And then there is a bigger cortex also called the frontal cortex. Fundamentally, we have three brains which are firing. I have brainstem, which is allowing me to breathe and then my heart is beating. And then I have the emotional system or the limbic system responsible for modulation of fear, fight, flight. I have certain threat coming in. I need to protect all the love, care, compassion, emotions largely are arising from that limbic system. If the limbic system goes unchecked, which means it is firing, 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 there's a lot of the yellow thing that you're seeing is lighting up of the areas in functional MRI. This is of a person where uh, this is the primary scan before the practice of meditation when you have a very hyperactive limbic system, which means the person would always be fearful, would not be able to regulate the emotion, impulsivity, not able to focus, not able to have that pain control. So there will be little things would bother. There would always be that flight. There would always be that freeze phenomena, which is happening, not ready to uh, avail the, the entire prefrontal cortex, what is available for attuned communication, judgment, thinking right, good and bad, having future, absolutely less clear and decluttered view of life is all possible through the prefrontal cortex. Now, what you look in this particular example is this firing of the emotional limbic system, just one month of proper meditation, just one month, look at the reduction in the firing of that which happened over time, which means I would expect this person to be calmer, to be much more attentive, to have good memory, to focus better, to control the emotions better, to lead a life where you are able to control your life. Life is not controlling you. And this would be possible through the practice of neuro meditation. Every mind is different. Every brain is different. We start from a very different perspective. We go on and develop our brains to a different perspective. What is the meditation for you? What is the right thing which suits you? We don't go to one size fits all. What is that individualized technique, that personalized technique? I want you to explore in this course with me on the neuro meditation. So thank you very much for watching this module. We will continue having the module two, three, four, until eight, which will give you the types of meditation, the philosophy, what is happening in the brain when we are meditating, how to meditate. I will actually lead a practical session where we will lead you into the meditation. And I would also be talking about all the literature and scientific facts of health benefits and mental benefits. And I'm sure post the course, you will be absolutely 100% meditating as per your brain and mind and moving and changing the shift what you have to make it so that you can have a joyous, prosperous, wonderful and happy life. Signing off, Dr. Shweta Aratya. Let's meet in module two. If you enjoyed watching this neuro meditation episode, then I invite you to come live on Zoom with us on the 19th of April, on the third Saturday, where we bring in the entire neuro meditation course. There are seven modules to it, and I will be personally leading you through the steps of neuro meditation. What kind of meditation is right for you? How much time you should spend learning it? What is the community driving, you know, so that you can help me, I can help you. Because this is a very important fundamental of meditation. It takes a while to learn and it takes a while to remain motivated. All of this, we will be giving more information in the captions below. So I would love to see each of you in our course. Join soon so that we can meet online on Zoom. See ya then.